As a big fan of the arts and a student of science, I was keen to head down to this month's Fringe event, intriguingly labelled The Arts Experiment. It sounded from the website like it was going to be an interesting challenge. Student societies had teamed with scientists to try and blur the lines between arts and science, with everything from Caledonian dancers working with entomologists to the neuroscience of juggling. I caught up with some of the displays and Natasha Martineau, one of the organisers, who told me a little bit more. So this evening's Fringe is called the Arts Experiment and we've set a number of student societies a challenge to find an imperial researcher who can work with them to explain or interpret some of the activities they do through their society, whether that's playing instruments or dancing or uh, music technology. And the idea was firstly to work more with students through our fringe programme of public events and secondly to put on something that could be part of the celebrations for Arts Fest. So the first hall I've arrived at is intriguingly called Robot Fashion. Spray on clothing designer and chemical engineer Manuel Torres has teamed up with the Fashion Society to style Neo, the dancing robot. I'm going to have a quick chat with one of the representatives to see what they've been trying to achieve. So thank you for joining me. Can you tell me um, from what society you're actually from today? So, so I'm from the Personal Robotics Lab, which is a research laboratory in the, le- in the Department of Electrical Engineering. And we study robotics, particularly how robots interact with, with people. And here we have two nows, yeah. which uh, we are, it's a collaboration we are doing with Dr. Manel Torres. For, uh, for creating dances. So one of the things that we, we do with these robots is to put them into hospitals with children, with children that are ill, and the idea is that they're gonna have a companion for the duration of the stay. And what we found is that with this, so with this sort of clothes, is they're more friendly and it's more engaging, it's more like a, a friend, which is precisely what we want to obtain, because the, our part of the deal is make the robots dance, so that they're gonna be, teaching the children how to dance and today we have two different ways of approaching this dance. And the first one is just a dance and then you, the children imitate, whereas the other way is the other way around. The children dances and the robot tries to imitate. <clears throat> We're the Caledonian Society and we've teamed up with a, a doctor from the National History Museum. He studies insect behaviour uh, and he's big into his flies and his suggestion was there are actually quite a few comparisons to be drawn between um, insect behaviour, particularly swarming behaviour, and Scottish country dance. Duncan Civil, an entomologist from the Natural History Museum, told me a little bit more about the science behind dancing flies. So, thank you for joining me. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what you're trying to show between insects and dancing, please? Yes, well, there's a, a number of insects that do have dancing behaviour or dance-like behaviour, and it's often involved with mating or keeping territories, which, which again, is, is related to sort of mating. So. Um, so, so we joined up with the Caledonian Society here uh, and looking at the, the way insects really, uh, interact with each other and uh, the way that you know people do as well. Um, so it's looking at the similarity between the two. Excellent. And I hear they're going to do some dancing for us later. So are you going to be drawing the comparisons? or? Uh, yes. Uh, well, so, well, some of the... Uh, uh, dances that we'll be doing, we've actually thought of movements that mimic what some of these flies do in the wild. Um, gift giving is something that dance flies do. We've actually got a group of flies called dance flies, and there's about 300 types of dance fly in Britain. And some of these species, the males actually give the female a present to uh, encourage her to mate with him, or to keep her occupied, or you know, distract her, or whatever you think. Uh, some of these wrap the uh, present up in silk as well. Sounds like good guys. <laughs> yeah, but uh, some have learnt that uh, they don't necessarily have to um, get something she likes if they wrap it up in silk and conceal it. So normally the gift would be uh, another insect that the female can eat. Um, now some of the males have figured out that they can get a twig and wrap that up in silk and she might not find out with it, you know, until uh, he's done the job and uh, gone away. So. <laughs> so from dancing flies to the neuroscience of juggling, I caught up with Dylan Ailes from the Juggling Society and Ed Roberts, a postdoc in the Department of Medicine, who told me a little bit about how we can train our brain through juggling and similar activities. 
So here at the Arts Fest, we're finding the link between uh, neuroscience and juggling. And so we're seeing how juggling affects the brain and seeing what sort of things jugglers are able to do better and how juggling uh, affects your day-to-day tasks as well. So if you uh, look at differences between other expert groups, you can find um, changes in their brain structure which kind of reflect how well uh, they perform. So if you're an expert, you have differences in brain structure in specific areas related to that task. So ju- expert jugglers, you could expect to see the same thing. This month's Fringe hasn't been a standalone event. It's been part of Arts Week. I had a chat with Adam Funnell from the Student Union who told me a little bit more about what's been going on and how it's all turned out. This event comes as part of Arts Fest, which has been a week-long celebration of everything arty at Imperial. Um, we've had the big band playing on the Queen's Tower. We've had the gallery exhibition in the Blythe Centre. We've had open rehearsals from some of our big ensembles like the choir and the orchestra.